so jordan once again welcome to our, uh, our channel and second episode of shatner talks how was your journey from poland to uh, swiss yeah it was okay so right now i'm quarantined in my room so um i have my test when i arrive so i'm just waiting for that right now but i can get room service and stuff so it's fine <laughs> okay 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 so you are in basel right now where the world championships yeah. took place okay okay yeah so you'll be competing for swiss open or, uh, which is starting yes yeah so i start on wednesday um um yeah so i'm playing i i'm not sure who i'm playing yet because i've been promoted into the main draw so i'm just waiting to know who i'm playing so but yeah i'll play on wednesday okay so for singles as well as doubles or only for singles yeah only for singles i just play singles all the best for your tournament thank you so much thank you <laughs> right now we are in a very tough situation uh, uh during this pandemic of covid-19 so what were the mental challenges or physical challenges you faced as an athlete during this lockdown like when it began until now like how are you coping up coping up with them um i think initially when lockdown hit um i had done a lot of traveling and a lot of training so actually i felt a little bit like i needed a rest so in the first instance it was actually quite nice to be at home for a little bit um but because i'm not part of a national training center it was really difficult for me when i was living in the uk because um i didn't have a national base that maybe had a little bit more um flexibility with rules for training so i actually ended up being in a hall that had no lines wasn't high enough to do any clears or anything like that um and just a net that we stuck up across the the hall um so i think mentally we learned to be adaptable um and i think it made me want i like not take for granted when i um do have training because for sure there was a long period of time where i was just doing footwork in my garden and stuff like that so <laughs> i think um it's made me a little bit more hungry i think which is probably a good thing yeah actually the initial days were like very good like we were feeling very good like we were getting good rest <laughs> but then yeah, it, for uh, sure. it gradually became boring like we need to go out now yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> so you were uh, you were in your hometown in wales uh, during this uh, during the starting days of lockdown or uh, like in your training um, center initially i was in england because i've lived in england um for quite a long time now because i'm not able to be a badminton player and live in wales but there was a time where I, um i did go back to wales uh, and this is where i was when i talk about the small little hall that i was in um and then in the middle of the pandemic last october november time i moved to poland where it was a complete contrast of rules there where now i'm part of the polish national team training environment i was able to train so also probably that was a benefit as well like i actually was able to go back to wales for a little bit which was actually quite nice um but then yeah i moved in the middle of a to a completely new country in the middle of a pandemic so that was a bit crazy <laughs> okay so you are now representing poland for uh, for your tournaments or it's just a part of your training yeah so i'm i'm still representing wales um it's just that for me um my coach um is now the national head coach of poland and for me it was a really obvious decision that i would want to follow him to poland because he's the coach um that i have worked with since i had my success um and if i did stay in the uk actually i pretty much would really really struggle for any type of training because to be a, an elite badminton player for me to be in wales is just not possible so i've been adopted um as part of the polish national team so my flag is still wales when i compete but i'm definitely um really grateful to be part of the polish setup and i get treated like one of them which is really nice Okay. So, who, who, who's your coach? Can you name him? Name of yes, coach? my coach. Yeah, my coach's name is Steve Butler. So, Steve um, was former English national coach, former USA national coach, um, and former number thirteen in the world for uh, men's singles. Um, so, I started working with him uh, around two and a half years ago, 
And that's really when my my ranking shot up and my results completely did a 360. So that's why I followed him to Poland because my success is, has been since I've been able to work with him for sure. Okay. So any new things you learned during this pandemic, like uh, like any hobbies you caught up, new hobbies or new interests you developed? Yeah, so I think that, um, of course, just like the, just the regular stuff, like I had a lot more time on my hands, so a lot more reading, a lot more podcasts. And I think that a lot of players also became interested a little bit more in social media and showing themselves um on social media and i think that recently i've tried to um step my game up a little bit and share more of my career because i was really interested in other athletes and what they were up to and but the, the most of the athletes that were doing that were really like the top top end the top 10 top 20 and i think that I felt like I wanted to do that as well, but maybe just that, that player that's a little bit lower that is trying to chase the higher world rankings and what stuff looks like for me. So um, because I found it interesting, I hope about other players, I hope that, you know, some people find it interesting that I'm now um, trying just to share my story a little bit because I don't think my story will be the same as a lot of other uh, badminton players because of my situation so hopefully people find it interesting yeah yeah no even i saw your videos and it were amazing it was amazing oh thank you so much thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah thank you yeah and uh there are many uh, uh like uh when you uh started on youtube like when you started your youtube channel so what were the things like what what was your aim like what was your goal to convey like uh, you said your journey but like in what way, in what manner, like uh, what's your future plans for YouTube? So for me, um, when I look at badminton players on YouTube, there's a lot of badminton content on YouTube. There's, for me, there's kind of like two routes. There's more of like the vlogging um, type of route, or there's more like the coaching given badminton advice type of route. And for me, the, the type of stuff that I really interest in is more like the vlogging uh, type of route so what people are up to traveling mm -hmm. to tournaments what their training looks like now for them and a bit more about like the person rather than um like shot like tactics and technique stuff like that of course that stuff also is really really cool um yes. but just as a personal preference it's just more like i look at like anders and victor right now who have started their vlogs i'm really enjoying watching yeah. watching their vlogs so for me, it's just to create like my journey, my story, what I get up to and more the vlogging side. So I've done a little vlog now that I'll be releasing um, in a couple of days about coming to Switzerland and what that looks like for an athlete trying to travel. Also an athlete that is from one country, lives in a different country and is trying to travel to another country because of course all that is a little bit difficult. So I think, yeah, it's just more what my life looks like um, and hopefully people uh, enjoy what I have to, to show. Yeah, definitely they'll enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There's also a good culture, cultural mix you have got in your videos. Like you said, as you said, uh, you are from uh, Wales, then you are in currently in Poland for training and then you're traveling around the world for your tournaments. So that's a very good exposure public will get, people will get. And plus you said uh, regarding this, uh, like how is it in a tournament like how it how as a player you see a tournament so that's also a very nice idea and it's very great thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> so in 2019 you won uh four international tournaments and one future series one being polish international then Karabako international um then a jamaican international then a latvia international so how was like what all uh, challenges you face from your opponents like because the opponents are from very different countries like their game styles are different so what all new things you learned during that during that year in 2019 so you're 100% spot on there with like different styles like that's completely 100% yeah. correct what you're talking about and I think that I had to learn how to win and learn how to win against different styles that's uh, so true and 
Um, before when I would go to tournaments, I think I would just go and kind of already be expecting to maybe come out of the tournament after the first or second round. Um, I was a little bit lost and I think that in when I started working with Steve, I really had to focus and refound my confidence. And I think that we traveled a lot. We did a lot of tournaments um, and we varied in also standard because we had to learn to how to win and how to win win consistently, not just one good performance and one and then you know struggling to repeat that. It was all about consistency and because it's so hard to win a tournament, whether it's future series, IS, IC, to do it every single round is yeah. so, so, so difficult. So I think it was like the consistency of learning how to win and the pressure of winning something. And then instead of being like the unknown person, actually people kind of knowing a little bit more who you are and thinking, oh, actually, it's a good win if I beat that girl now, rather than being like the underdog all the time. So it was a real, real like learning curve for me, I think. So any interesting match you encountered, like any different difficult opponent, like, yeah, she was challenging and then you overcame her and wondered like any uh, memorable match in this, any of the series and the opponent name, please. Um, so I think one of my um, most difficult matches probably was against Lena Christofferson from Denmark. Denmark um, yes. So yeah, so Lena won, I think, the World Junior Silver the same year or the year before that I played her. And the week before I played her in Polish, um, she'd actually won an IC um, or got to the final. I think I think one or got to the final. So obviously then she was playing really well and when I first played Lena when, when the match started in Polish International she was on absolute fire and I remember turning to my coach and thinking okay we've got a tough a tough match here but I managed to play my way into the game um I think off out of memory I think the score was like 21-19 21-19 21-19 all in all sets um, so I think it, the game could have gone either way uh, and luckily it, I was able just to convert those those match points but actually even though I had been winning that year because of her success even though she was young I would say she was still kind of the favorite in that scenario so that was a really challenging match because she started really well um, but I managed to find my way uh, into the match. And, but she's a very good player, so that was quite a good win for me, I think. Okay. So you said uh, there was a, the first set was quite challenging for you. So what what was the next strategy like you uh, tried? Like anything new or what was your mental preparation like then I need to go to win the second set? Yeah, so I think that um, actually when, when we were playing, I was kind of a little bit... Um, like a little bit flustered in the beginning of the game because she did come at me really, really strongly. Um, and I think that um, my coach was there, which was really helpful because he was able to, to help me like regain my focus and stuff like that. Um, and I think that actually I had to stop worrying about her and worry about myself more, like what I could do rather than, whoa, she's hitting like such good shots here. How am I going to deal with this? It was more like, how can, what can I do to try and nullify this or, or to change this? So I think on, in this match, I had quite good mentality um, just to not worry about her so much. Because I think sometimes players worry about their opponents so much that that kind of overwhelms them. So it was more worrying about me. Um, and then, of course, at the back end of the game, it's like 18 all, 19 all it's so difficult at those stages and luckily I was able to get the win so <laughs> that's the extreme point like you can't afford a silly mistake you can't afford any mistakes over there <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and so uh, and also with, uh, you said you uh, she was the favorite over there for the for the particular tournament so that's also a good achievement that you won against all your odds all the odds yeah no it's a uh, I actually have only been in uh, one tournament that I've won. I've only been number one seed one time. All the other tournaments, I either wasn't seeded or I was seeded lower, like two, three, four, something like that. So 
actually I quite I think I'm quite good at being the underdog so I think uh, I think yes. my character is a little bit like that and I think that I enjoy um, the fight on the court um, like the the competition and the battle between the other person so I think maybe it's not a coincidence that that's the way it's fallen for me so so what's what's your general game style like what kind of gameplay you love like is it very fast or is it very aggressive or you just play with the uh, opponent's mind like you test his patience uh, test your patience and then you uh, come up with your own uh, strategy so what's your favorite kind of gameplay um so i think it's changed um i think it's changed when i was a lot younger i was um just pure attack and I think I was a lot taller and a lot stronger than all the juniors so for a long time I was able to win just by being stronger than everyone else and when everyone else grew and when everyone else got stronger then I wasn't so effective so when we start working with Steve I don't want to lose my attack because for me I'm quite an aggressive um like strong player um and I think I win a lot of my games with my attacking shots I'm definitely not somebody that is a defensive player that runs around all day but I think that um since working with Steve my fitness has improved like a thousand thousand percent so now I can combine my attack but I can also stay on the court for a long time and compete for a long time um, not in terms of defense, like always, because to some players, like for example, maybe like a smaller Asian style player will just happily run around all day, just defend and yeah. get everything back and frustrate the opponent. I'm for sure like an outcome player, but I, you can't just be an outcome player. You also have to have the fitness behind you to consistently do that at a high level. So I think that's why I found that combination. So that's why I then had the success that I had, I think. Yeah, that's great. And even uh, like there's uh, uh, Asian Asian players' game style and European players' game style is also quite a different. So it, that's also a very good thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So uh, you, uh, as a, um, you won four international tournaments in 2019, and then this COVID-19 pandemic came. And then uh, badminton uh, began with uh, the uh, Denmark Open in 2020. So what was like uh, from going from international level to a World Tour tournament? So what was your preparations or like what was going through your mind? Because the players over there, the Seagate players or any other players who were in the main draw were like uh, were having a quite a good rank over there. And they were almost regular for World Tour. So it was your first World Tour tournament, right? So what was, like, uh, uh, were you over, overwhelmed in the beginning or what was your uh, preparation, like, mentally? Um, yeah, so I think that my my overall goal um, as a player is to consistently be in those big tournaments. So I think that um, when I did enter Denmark and also saw Law, I think, the week after, um, oh, yes. I think I played some, yeah, I think I played some 100s, but Denmark was a lot higher than I got in before. Oh, so when I did get in um, to that event, I was um, just really grateful for the opportunity. I think I wasn't um, overawed because I think that um, I was more excited to go and play because that's where I want to be. And I know that to of course, lower my world ranking, I have to get in those big tournaments. So, yes. um, yeah, so I think that actually when I look at these big tournaments, it's actually more of an excited feeling rather than a overwhelming feeling. And I think that's how you have to look at it. Like you have to take the opportunity when it's there because, you know, it might not be a consistent thing right now. And so when you do have that opportunity, you have to kind of take it and run with it a little bit. And you even won the first round of that tournament, like, uh, uh, and then it was Nozomi Okuhara in the second round. So what was that feeling like facing the 2017 world champion and like, she's like in the top five. So what was that like, because she's super senior in this tournament, like shit. So what was going through your mind before the match? Um, of course, I think that in that instance, you, yeah. 
you watch somebody on the television so much or on YouTube at such big tournaments. So actually when you're going on to court with them, for me, um, I did feel a little bit, not overwhelmed in a bad way, but it's when that person is always on a screen and then you see them in real life, it's a little bit strange. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of course, she actually won that tournament. She was playing absolutely on fire. Um, yeah. And I think that I just enjoyed the experience. It was a tough experience because I'm a player that likes to be in control when they're playing. But of course, when you play somebody of that standard, then of course you're always going to be under pressure the whole time because their shot quality is so high and and because just in general their their consistency is just so much better because that's why they are so highly ranked in the world but I mean I did enjoy it and I just I want to be in and around that level of badminton all the time I don't want to of course it was amazing to do what I did but of course I, I want to progress into the big tournament so um, I hope that I can do that now in the next few months. Yeah, all the best. And uh, even also there in Denmark Open, there were many other players who were uh, like uh, returning from this pandemic, like all the big names like Carolina Marin, then Taiju, uh, sorry, Taiju was not there, uh, Chen Yufei, PV Sindhu and many other players. So what was that overall experience of the tournament? You might have watched them play uh, at, live for the, uh, maybe for the first time. So what was it like? Uh, what all new things you learned during this uh, uh, Denmark Open? Um, I think it's it's always really different watching those type of players in real life. Um, yes. I'm lucky enough that I've been able to go to the All England as a child. So I've seen some of the bigger players play. Um, but it is really different. And I think they are... When you like are in and around that type of player... You just, you just feel a little bit like they're class and they're so professional and you can just feel that like radiating off them a little bit. Um, and I guess that maybe like I, when I was 130 in the world, I looked at people that were 70 and 80 and, and felt that type of, that type of vibe from them. And now that I'm 63 in the world now, maybe people underneath hopefully may feel that little bit of vibe and then now I have to look at the yeah. next people exactly. and now I look at them and and I think that that's kind of how it works so um I think that their professionalism and just the aura of of them as a person it's really obvious um yes. and I hope that I can become more professional and and I can keep climbing so I feel more more closer to them in that type of area i think yeah definitely definitely um so after this uh, swiss open ends you will be flying back to uk i guess for the all england uh so back to poland first okay to do a little okay. bit of training and then to all england which i'm very 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 excited about yes yeah even we are excited as a viewer because like it's such a big tournament and then it's happening after so much long time because there was a huge break between. So we are, as a viewer also, I am excited for Holling Line this time. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll be able to see your match on TV then. I hope so. <laughs> yes, yes. And so you'll be facing Biving Zhang, if I'm not wrong, from USA, right? Yeah. So, have you have you ever met a, like a, as an opponent to uh, against her, like in any particular tournament before? Is it the first time you're gonna face her? Yeah, it'll be the first time that I'll play Baywan. Yeah. Okay. So, what all like you might have seen her matches uh, before this? So, what all things you uh, any strategies you can share? <laughs> um, so, of course, like of course, me and my coach will do match analysis for sure. Yeah. Of course, I also have seen uh, Bayern play, so um, I have like a general view of like what she's like as a player. Um, I think she has some really good skills, and I think she's a really athletic player. Um, of course, as well, she's really highly ranked in the world, so you know she is um, an, a really top top player in the world right now. Um, and I think, say in saying that, I think that 
like I said a little bit earlier, you can't really focus on your opponent too much. Of course, in a tactical way, there will be some things that my coach will be able to point out, maybe that I can hopefully exploit when, when we do play. But for it's more about me and more about if I perform, because if I perform, then I can give my chance to be in the game. If I don't perform, then, you know, I, I won't be in the game. That's just how black and white it is, really. So um, I think that mostly the focus, my focus will mostly be on me and preparing myself to play somebody of that standard. And of course, my coach will help with some tips and tricks on the way, hopefully to, uh, to look at her tactically as well. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And all the best for this uh, Swiss Open and all the upcoming All All England tournament also. So Thank any you. other tournament you are gonna uh, go after this, or you are gonna train for for a while, like. Um. So I think, of course, right now, um, we literally don't know if a tournament's gonna get cancelled like tomorrow. So it's difficult to say. I had yeah. planned. Um. So I will play Polish Open. Um. Okay as well um i think that's just before or just after all england um the week before or week after um and then my plan was to go to the um to go to asia actually to go to the malaysia and singapore tour um yeah. of course that's been uh, postponed a little bit now um but i yeah. hope that then I will be able still to go to that tour, um, which will be my first time to go on an Asia tour. So um, I think that would be quite an exciting thing. So hopefully um, that will be on and I can go to um, Malaysia and Singapore. Yeah. So so if you uh, go for Singapore and the Malaysia Asian leg, so will it be the first time you are going there or you have been there before this or any other um, tournament, international series or anything? So as far as Asia is concerned, I, uh, I've been to India. So I've, um, I played in um, Hyderabad uh, okay. yeah. last, well, it won't be last year now, it'll be like two years ago, I think. Um, so yeah, I played, in, I played in that tournament. But in terms of like Asian countries, in terms of Malaysia and Singapore, it'll be my first time to those type of countries. So that's quite an exciting thing for me as well. I think that's, that also shows that, I'm progressing. So that yeah. means that now I have to join people that are that level on the world tour stage. So yeah, I'm looking forward to being part of that. Yeah. So what was your experience in India? Hey, I you? had such a good experience. No, it was really nice. And um, I think that I, I was, I went by myself. So I'm, um, I traveled quite a long way by myself and I was really jet lagged and I was a little bit nervous because of like visa and, uh, and stuff like that. And because I have to do all of that type of thing by myself. So everything I organized for tournaments, visa applications, hotel, everything um, I have to do by myself. So it's always that little bit of being scared, like have I done everything correctly? But as soon as I said to the guys, as soon as they saw my badminton bag, then I was treated so kindly because, of course, badminton is huge in uh, in India. So everyone was really, really kind. And, and so I enjoyed my experience. Yeah, in India, we have a culture called Atiti Devo Bhava. So it okay. means like your guests are always God, always your God. So we believe like we treat whenever any guests come to our homes or from anywhere, we treat very great, uh, very uh, like we, the way we treat our God with the way we yeah no for sure i now that i know that then yeah it's completely obvious because everyone was so kind so yeah it was really good yeah so did you had any hyderabadi food like biryani or anything no so it was it was so weird so i went to breakfast in the hotel and there was just like curry everywhere and uh and i was like what do I do for my breakfast and stuff like that? So, um, so uh, they were really, um, they were really kind. Like they made me some, uh, some stuff that I would normally have for breakfast and everyone was so kind to me. So, uh, but no, I didn't have any, I, I actually, I'm not very good with spicy food or anything like that. Oh. So they had to, they had to help me. <laughs> yeah. So any other Indian food you tried over there in Hyderabad? Like any like proper typical Indian food. 
for yeah, the not really. yeah no not really that's such a I, that's so bad isn't it I should be able to say um that I have but not really I I'm like I'm when I'm on when I'm in tournaments I'm really particular about my food um and I really try to keep it as consistent as what I am at home that's why as well right now because we're in quarantine and we're not able to go out and eat in different restaurants that I can choose um yeah. I'm packing so many snacks and so much stuff that I can maybe replicate that I when I have at home um so I'm, I'm a bit fussy really when it comes to food <laughs> any plans for India Open this season this year India Open or uh, this Hyderabad Open or any like are you planning to come yeah, to so India yeah I think so so um on my tournament program right now we have India Open so yeah. um of course if everything goes ahead then of course I would love to to come out to India again um my experience was really good so um so yeah it's, it's on the tournament program so hopefully I will be there yeah <laughs> and maybe hopefully you can get the good Indian food this time get the taste of yeah <laughs> maybe I should try this time <laughs> yeah yeah definitely you'll you'll really like it <laughs> okay thank <laughs> you um a, one basic question out of uh, context like do you watch football like do you love football um uh, Yeah so in Wales it's mainly about rugby but yeah of course we watch football in uh in the UK a lot so yeah Okay who's your favorite player So I guess cuz I'm from Wales then I have to say Gareth Bale so <laughs> otherwise I think that I have would have lots of hate mail from Welsh people so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah like he is he is like even i he is my favorite player too gareth bale yeah i have been okay. idolizing him since he was in real madrid oh okay yeah and he did, he also did really well last night right was it last yeah, night i think he scored yeah, yeah in the premier league like he scored two goals for spurs yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he's right now at his current level like we the gareth bale we want to see like he's the one right now he's that version right now um so uh, as you said that you started uh, playing badminton at a very early age so what were the challenges you faced and what like what was the first thing uh, you saw uh, like when you like if you are a child you get attracted to anything like so what was the moment you got attracted to badminton like you got you got attached to it back uh, to it um i think that naturally I'm quite a competitive person and I think that my parents also especially my dad is very competitive so in sport it was kind of I always wanted to be really good at sport no matter what sport I did um when I started badminton um of course there were people that had been playing much longer than me so I just wanted to at the time I just wanted to be the best in the club that I was playing at that was basically it um and i think i saw success and i saw that i was okay at it so i wanted more success um and i think that's probably why i took to badminton in terms of um like things i had to look at when i started badminton in terms of like training and stuff i had to focus on stuff like that that was more my cuz i was so young that was more my parents side so they had to try and look at where I was going to train how we were going to get there stuff like that but I just wanted to win basically I think to be an athlete you have to be competitive so I yeah I wanted to win I wanted to be good <laughs> so um you said that we talked about this earlier that wales is not very familiar like it's not a, badminton is not a very famous sport in uh, wales so uh, there might be some challenges on the base in terms of infrastructure or equipments or like training uh, training centers they might uh, because there's i i don't think there's a national camp for badminton in wales i guess because that's the reason you have been uh, training in poland so what were the uh, challenges you had to face uh, during this uh, the early stages of your professional life so um yeah exactly like you say there's no real national training set up for a full time badminton player in wales so it was up to my parents to try and look for things for me 
So five days a week, I think my parents would drive for two hours to training. I would train for two hours and then they would drive home. Of course, that's petrol costs, court costs, shuttle costs, coaches yeah. cost. My family have invested, I wouldn't even like to say how many thousands of pounds into, into badminton for me. Um, and then of course, as soon as I kind of hit senior age, I had to leave Wales because there was no training for me. Um, so I've had to sacrifice a lot in terms of um, being able to see my family. Uh, and also in terms of like friends, when I was younger, it was really difficult for friends to understand what I was doing. And I always kind of felt like a little bit out of the loop with my friends because they were able to do things that maybe I wasn't able to because I had to train or I had to travel to a tournament. So I think all athletes sacrifice, but I think it was just amplified because of my country and where I lived in my country, especially um yeah and exactly like you say that's why unfortunately well it's unfortunately that I live in Poland because I can't be with my parents but um I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity because I'm really enjoying my time there so where did you uh, train during this uh, you said you said you you used to take two hours from your home so where did you train like uh, in London or where no, so it was um, in Cardiff, which is okay. still in Wales, but it's still in Wales. But um, because I live in like the really far west of Wales, it's still okay. uh, like two hours away from my home, my home uh, in Wales. And um, it was with a personal coach there that I did that with um, because there were some t like some small national trainings like for me, but to be an elite badminton player in Wales is, right now is absolutely impossible. Um, so yeah, that's why I was in, I had to, to drive to Cardiff where like Welsh Open and stuff like that is held. Um, so yeah, that's where I had to go. And maybe seeing your achievements and your dedication towards the sports, maybe where uh, Wales can set up your, uh, set up an own national camp for, for players. So many other players uh, after you can get motivated. I think, yeah, I think that for me, it would be so nice to see Wales on the badminton map. Like today yeah. I arrived in Switzerland and they asked me, um, I had my coronavirus test and they had a list of countries and they said, where are you from? And I say, Wales. And they say, oh, you're the only person. And I say, yes, and it's always that way. So I think right now, this is why also that I've decided to branch out and share different things onto social media to try and gain, um, like to help people to see what it's like and to try and help, especially of course, Welsh young players. Um, because for me, I just want the sport in Wales to continue. And right now on the world stage, it's only me. And I would love to have a team that we all travel together. So yeah, I think the goal should be for Wales to have that environment, hopefully in the, in the future. And it, and it will begin from you because you are the first <laughs> one to go so far in badminton representing your country with all those challenges. So it's a very, very uh, great, great thing, like great achievement right now. That's really kind of you to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, did you like uh, see anyone playing on TV like when you were young? So, or is it like you went with the flow? Yeah. So, um, when I was younger, I was sponsored by Yonex. Okay. Um, I was sponsored by Yonex for around 10 years. Um, and so, of course, being a Yonex player, you get to um, you get to go to the All England. So um, that's one of the my main times that I would see badminton. Like when I was a junior, like YouTube and streaming wasn't really a thing. So yeah. um, uh, of course, there was YouTube, but not like how it is now. Yeah, so it was exactly. kind of yeah, it was kind of the All England was the only like live high level badminton for me. I remember going and watching, of course, the Lindan Lee Chong Wei battles. And um, of course, one player that sticks out in my mind is uh, Pi Hong Yan from France. I really loved, uh, she was originally 
um, uh, from, uh, I think it was from like China, Indonesia, something like that. And she came and played in France. Um, and she's a standout player. I used to really enjoy her, watching her play when I was a junior. Mm -hmm. So what was your, uh, like, uh, can, uh, what is the most favorite match of yours? Not, not you playing, but two different opponents, like as a spectator, which is the best match you remember? Like most memorable match. Like this is the favorite part. Like I'm, I'm never, never going to forget this match in my life. Yeah. What was it? Um, actually I watched a match the other day. Um, I actually watched PV Sindhu versus Marin in Rio final. And I think I just I don't know why I watched it. I think it came up as a suggestion on YouTube, and I think I just gave it a little watch. And I know it's not one from my childhood, but what I found really interesting when I watched it was it was so like such a nervous game. And I think it's really rare to see Marin nervous because there was hardly any rallies. It was just who could keep it on the court for the longest time yeah. because of course yeah it's going for the olympic gold is such a crazy thing to be playing for and i think the it wasn't actually the best quality of game but i think the back and forth and the yeah like the battle of who was gonna literally keep it in the longest was really interesting um i also of course love watching sindhu play because she's a really tall player like me so i can't really look at asian players like okihara yamaguchi and compare yeah. myself to them because they're so small and so fast so if yeah. i was to compare my like body type to somebody it would be more sindhu so mm -hmm. yeah that was a crazy game. i don't, i literally watched that like last maybe two weeks ago but it was really enjoyable and like to watch i think I, I watched it live uh, during my college days. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we were like, we were just hooting, cheering for Sindhu because she was the first one to uh, enter into finals of uh, Olympics. Like we had China Neval. She won bronze yeah. uh, in the London Olympics. But that was a, really a great a great achievement for us. I know she might, uh, she, was, she was disappointed uh, with the silver. But uh, yeah, it was a great, a great achievement. And finally, she won 2019 World Champions. And that was the great, uh, like, uh, I can say I have seen her struggle with those silver medals and then finally getting her gold. So that was very proud as a viewer and as an Indian to see her. And I am yeah, hoping I think that she gets uh, the gold for the Olympics. Let's see. Let's hope. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think like... Um when Sindhu won the world championships it was kind of a bit like a Disney like fairy tale type of thing because yeah, exactly. she got silver so much and when she did I, I watched the final live so when she did get that it was even as an athlete like just watching that I was so pleased for her that she got that <laughs> and she was really on fire in that tournament like from defeating Biving Zhang then Taizu Ying then Chen Yufei and then finally Nozomi Okuhara and that to it straight two sets. So that was that the dominance she showed on the court was really majestic. Like I was like really I had goosebumps when she uh, just won that final point. I was like oh, wow. Was that really, was like, so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so uh, you uh, you have been playing for quite a long time right now. So what, who is your favorite player, like current favorite player in each of the category? Like just a... Uh, uh. Okay, so women's singles, I say right now, um, I think, of course I'm European uh, and I'm quite an aggressive player. So I love Marin right now, his style, her, her time in Thailand was crazy. Like she did so well. Um, I love her desire. I love her whole story and I watched her documentary and I think it was such a cool mm. insight into a, a national international badminton player. Mm. Um, men singles, um, I think that of course Victor is on fire right now um, and I think he's doing amazing. I think that actually for me to watch um, Hans Wittinghus in, 
in the in the Thailand uh, Open was crazy. Yeah. I love the story. I'm kind of like I I like a story, so mm -hmm. I I love the story of him being promoted and stuff like that. Um, women's doubles, I'd maybe say uh, Polly and Rahayu. I think that like yeah, they, too. yeah. Also also watching them play. And I saw their BWF interviews um, after in Thailand, and they were so they, you know they were so emotional, like because they were just yeah. loving playing. Yeah. That was so cute. I love that. Yeah. Um, men's doubles for me, the daddies like uh, unbelievable. Like men's doubles players, their style, their coach is so cool. Like the story with that, um, and also I think that when one's injured the other one is like basically carrying the other one on their back and I remember in All England like last year when they had the injury and then this year in Thailand they had the injury so that was really cool um and the mix I think oh so difficult I think I'm I know Marcus and Lauren quite well we play in the same French club um so I'm also from the UK, so I'm not from England, but it's the UK, so I guess I have to throw that in there as well. So they're doing really well right now, and I think they had a really good period just before um, yeah. coronavirus hit, so I hope that now they have a really good period again for them, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, like, uh, for uh, if we go on the current players, like, not in uh, this men, women's single, but also other uh, other players like in other categories like men singles and other categories so what is one thing from each player like can you name players and what one thing you would like to learn from them like you need to get that skill from them any particular shot or any other quality of the player you can name the player and the quality okay so any shot from Tai Yang's round the head like especially like stop drop like slow like her deception from around the head is unbelievable um i think right now i would love to have victor's defense victor axelson's defense um i saw him at the euro play uh, europeans and i saw an interview with uh christo popov from a uh, france yes. and yeah. he was saying everyone's talking about victor's attack but his defense right now is unbelievable and i think i completely agree Mm -hmm. um Marin's fire I have a lot of fire I'm not sure I have as much as Marin I I, I try but I think yeah like she controls games with her fire sometimes like sometimes she gets herself in into games purely from that so I think that's a really good um a really good thing about her game and then finally maybe to be as cool and calm as the daddies, like that would be so, so cool. To be able to play with that type of style, that's never gonna happen for me, to be that calm and skillful, but they they look so good when they play. And I think that's like, Indonesian style men's doubles is really good to watch. Cindy's attack, when it's on fire is is so good because she's so tall she can get some such good angles and she's a bit taller than me i think so um but i mean i would love to have that, that type of angle to my game um if the minions want to give me some of their speed that would be amazing um because <laughs> i think they have too much they can share it's no problem <laughs> um and um savage player i have seen kevin sanjaya he's so he's so dominating on the court like they are they are like so short but that game and then level of competition they are giving to the other players it's like really joyful to watch especially uh, them against endo watanabe from japan so that matches are like very uh, mesmerizing for public as a viewer and I think when like he like the minions read the game like so well like that's that's also what makes them look super fast as well because their game reading is just unbelievable. Um, Momota, I mean Momota, Momota's just ability to win like Momota's and look like he's enjoying it even when uh, even when it looks like so difficult for him 
he just looks like he's having so much fun all the time. And I think that's like, of course, there's times he must be hurting so much, but he looks cool. He looks calm and he just looks like he's enjoying what he's doing. So I think that's a really good um, thing to have about his game. Yeah. And the the story of Momota, Kento Momota is really like in, uh, we, can, we can call a movie or something like going uh, down and then coming so strong from 2017 and he's been un- unbeatable for the past two and a half years. And I like, I wish like we can get more of his game right now and uh, hopefully for the Tokyo Olympics because it's his home ground. Yeah, and no, that'd be like a, another little fairy tale for sure if he can go yeah, to Tokyo. Yeah, yeah, like two times world champion and then then Olympics. It's just great. <laughs> so um, we'll be having some fun, uh, fun like rapid fire round. We'll begin with the rapid fire. You have to name a player which comes to your mind after listening to this words. So the first one is lightning. Um, well, we just spoke about it, so probably Kevin, well, either Minion, to be honest, but yeah, the Minions for sure. Okay. Um, the Wall? Um, yeah, probably Victor with his defence right now. Um, yeah, crazy defence right now, getting everything back. Yeah. Um, trickster, like, uh, very trickery. Um... Oh, good question. Um, maybe, maybe Momota. I think Kento. Like you see some of his net shots, um, no. and you think, yeah, there's no way that's going to go back over the net. Like it's so yeah. tight, but yeah, he can get it back over the net even when it's like net cord. Really good. Mm-hmm. Um, fire. Marin, Marin, Marin. <laughs> There's no one else you can really say. <laughs> is 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 Marine, Carolina Marin your idol? Is it safe to say that? Like you idolize her based on I the think, game style? Yeah, I think I think that I I look at her and I think like what you're doing is amazing. Like I really respect her as a player but also um, as a person now because of the documentary that I saw so yeah. if I had to if I had to YouTube like a match to watch I would mm-hmm. marry I would always probably choose Marin I think yeah her document <laughs> really very inspiring and motivating I, even I have watched it yeah it's really yeah. <laughs> so, so. Um, so the next one is Joker like the funny one uh, who is the funny one? Probably Anders, Anson's son. Anders, Anson, yeah. Uh, yeah, he also on his vlogs now, like, he, he seems like a fun guy and um, uh, he also has fun on the court and he's always doing silly things. So, yeah. probably Anders. <laughs> There's a lot of positive energy uh, from, uh, we get as a viewer from Anders Antonsen, like very joyful nature and very down to earth nature. Like as a viewer, I don't know him personally or anything, but as a viewer, he's very positive. Like uh, he, the vibe, the aura around him is very positive, very happy, happy vibe. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, next one is lazy. Um. Okay. So not in a not in a bad way but the daddies because they look so lazy in defense but as in not lazy like because they can't be bothered but lazy in terms of it's just so easy for them like you see some of the way that the japanese like are smashing and jumping the chinese Mm -hmm. taipei pair that played um in thailand like they are jumping and yeah like they're jumping so high and they are smashing it hard and yeah it's just so chilled so yeah, probably that. That that's the reason they are called daddies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, king of the court. Um, I think right now, mm-hmm. in current form, Victor is like king right now. I obviously we haven't seen Momota, so but like in, today, right now, Victor. But in the past, I would say maybe. For me, I grew up watching Lindan, so Lindan Lee Chong Wei, so um, probably Lindan, I would say. Okay. 
um and uh, i know the answer like every viewer knows the answer for this but actually i want your opinion on this greatest of all time the goat um so yeah controversial probably will get some haters but yeah right now like out of legion way lindan i guess like Lin, for me Lin, lindan um yeah. for sure like mm-hmm. I, the battle between them is unreal i feel so bad that lee chong way did not get a gold at an olympics um because yeah. i think he deserved it for sure um yes. but yeah lindan for me for sure <laughs> okay um so we have heard where two two major rivalries in men's singles so the first one is uh peter gade and tofik hidayat and then after that they pass the legacy to lee chong way and lindan so who are the current rivals in women singles category like for you uh, like yeah their their match is like the most epic one and it's the most uh, interesting one for you who are those two persons like whose rivalry um, do you think it yeah i think that as a viewer um mm-hmm. when you watch rachnok versus tai su ying because of their asian style I think it makes for a really like good looking match because they have such good looking like technique and good looking style that rivalry is really nice to watch um I think it's not like a like a rivalry in terms of um uh, like head to head like really aggressive like wanting to kill each other but seeing them i outplay each other and try and outmaneuver each other and i think that's quite cool to watch i would say and same for the men singles category like current like the two opponents you love to watch play against each other um i would say that let me think I think actually when you put like European style versus Asian style sometimes it's not actually like a really like good looking match I mm-hmm. like because the styles are so different of course like some of the some of the styles are unbelievable like but when you watch uh like Kento playing like Chen Long or something like that because it's like Asian style it's 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 a slightly different vibe from the from the from the court so um so yeah i think that's quite cool to watch like that's quite pleasing to the eye again not like a kill each other i want to beat you and the thing yeah. but i think it's really nice to watch and same for the other three categories um men's doubles women's doubles or mixed doubles and mixed doubles um i think that in terms of rivalry rivalry you have to go women's doubles you have to go japanese japanese because like how can you not like you you can't not say japanese japanese um i mean you may be there for like 5 hours because the consistency and the quality is so high but i think that's kind of how it has to be um i think men's doubles It's quite cool sometimes to see countryman versus countryman. So like for example, like Indonesia versus Indonesia, Japan versus Japan. Those type of rivalries are quite interesting. Um so but I really like the new young um Indonesian pair, uh, the men's doubles that the the world junior champions who have just started coming onto the scene. So now Indonesia yeah. have like three men's doubles yeah. pairing that LCN so and so- RB. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, it's forced to so that that's like unbelievable. Um, a mixed doubles. Do you know who I really enjoyed watching in Thailand actually was um Gekalan Dalru from France, probably bringing it back a little bit to European, have to mention some Europeans. They yeah, did so yeah. well. Yeah, they so they did so well. Um so I'm really enjoying watching them play right now because as well they're a little bit underdog story. and they have mm-hmm. had some battles with like um Jordan and uh, Octavian team people like that there's quite a good rivalry going on there i think so okay okay um next one is like if you were given a chance to be a superhero 
okay so who would you choose to be and why um i think that in terms of like specific superhero i couldn't really choose but when i had a chat with bwf um a couple of weeks ago they asked me if i what i would like to to have as a power so I'm all about Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter. So I would probably steal Harry Potter's invisibility cloak. So maybe I would be like Mrs. Invisible or something, but specifically I want that that invisibility cloak. I think that's really cool. <laughs> okay. Um what would you choose? A football match or a cricket match? Like what would you love to see more? Cricket or football? I think for me if I was going to watch it I think I would quite like to go and watch cricket. It's kind of like an all-day event. It's more of like a whereas obviously football is like 90 minutes. But if I was going to watch it live, I would love cricket is quite um common in school um in Wales, so a lot of people play cricket, so probably cricket I would say. Okay. And who is your favorite player to watch in cricket? Um I think that I'm a little bit more old school so and I and I do like like the joker type of character so I mean I remember like 2004 ashes I think where like with like Freddie Flintoff um like his whole underdog story like that was pretty cool and I've seen some like videos of him um playing in like Australian leagues and having like a microphone and doing commentary and singing whilst he's playing yes. like I think he was singing Elvis when he was like playing um i think that's really cool like it's a, a good character to have when you're playing sport i think okay. so andrew flintoff is your favorite player right yeah i think so, <laughs> so um, what would you choose marvel or dc dc comics or marvel um so i would choose marvel but specifically because my little sister um is absolutely blowing up on tiktok right now her her tiktok name is jelly donut 22 so go and check her out and she donut 22 jelly oh, donut no, jelly donut 72 okay jelly, jelly donut 72 yes jelly donut okay. 72 so yeah. um, yeah. and she, right now she is absolutely blowing up on TikTok and she's doing all Marvel stuff and One Division or she, she mm. knows what she's doing and she's doing really good <laughs> so go and check her out <laughs> we'll definitely check uh, check the TikTok account for sure <laughs> thank you yeah um what would you choose uh, to play I, a cross court smash or a deceptive drop shot I think I can do the cross court smash. I don't think I'm as good at the the deceptive drop shot. I think I find it easier to hit it harder. So, um I would like to be better at the the deceptive drop shot. Okay. Um what would you choose? Um Okay, so here's a tough one. So either Lee Chong Wee or Linden, who would you choose? You got it. I think my heart is with Lee Chong Wei because he he didn't get that gold and I really want that for him but for me I I'm more Lee, uh, a Lin Dan girl I think um I think he, his story of course they're both amazing but if I had to choose one it would be Lin Dan I think yeah but and the legacy they both have left I don't think like uh, we can we'll see definitely good badminton in the upcoming years but that legacy we saw for almost a decade from 2007 to 2019 no 2018 so that was yeah. the the legacy they left it's really unmatchable it's really special yeah. to see any of the matches yeah no 100% any memorable match of them like linden against lee chong wee the your most favorite match uh, i would say I think the last time I watched them play was final of the All England. I think um that that was the last final that they played. I was there yeah. the last final that they played. Um mm-hmm. so I guess that will have to be like the most memorable because I was there and uh and yeah, but of course any of their matches are such ridiculously high quality so you could choose kind of any yeah. of them. Yes, yes, yes. 
for me it's always the 2016 rio olympics semi final like it was really uh, like really special to see lee chong wee defeat linden at the third attempt in the semi finals i wish they would have come for the finals but yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. okay so um can you do you uh, so you are right now equipped with sponsored by forza right fz forza so yeah. what's the racket you use the string and the shoes uh, if you can help me out so i use the fz power uh, 75 Okay. Um uh, and I um, my string is Power Plus. I said what's a Power Plus. Oh, okay. Um and I currently wear the the all white I said for the shoes. Um okay. I yeah so um I tried different ones but the, mm. the they're the top top end shoe like the the all white ones which I really love so um they're the ones that I'll be wearing this week so <laughs> okay so uh as a viewer as uh, we always uh, want to know like what what a player uses like what he carries in the bag what or what she carries in the bag so what what all important things uh, you think are uh, necessary to be in your bag so uh, like for, so you are ready for anything in terms of badminton um i always have Uh, this may sound silly um i i always have super glue because a lot of the times my shoes will break um it's mm-hmm. happened in tournaments where my shoes have broke so i always have super glue um mm-hmm. i always have a sera band so like for mm-hmm. warm up um to stretch off to i think that's a really good tool to have in a bag uh, a foam roller also i always have my foam roller um and of course my shoes uh, and my racket um i think that also some snacks because you never really know what's going to happen in a game so um i think those are the core things that i probably have in my bag okay so how many rackets do you carry in your kit bag for a tournament for a tournament um i think right now i have 8 or 9 Oh, um yeah. <laughs> yes uh, yeah i think 8 or 9 um because as well um the i i have my string and it's really nice string but um i do break a quite a lot of string so i need to have more more yeah. rackets i think <laughs> okay so uh, before we uh, finish this uh, interview session uh, like the, the interaction session um what message would you like to give to the our audience and your fans especially your fans um i guess i hope that people enjoyed watching our little chat i really enjoyed it um i think that i've started to become more open on social media and with youtube channel and sharing my story um mm-hmm. my intention is to try and help so as long as it helps one person then i think i've done my job even if one person has like the smallest takes the smallest thing away from um my social media that helps them then that's perfect so i hope that the content that i'm producing um people like and that you know to show the journey and the progression from um a small little country into the world circuit now at 63 in the world and hopefully continuing to climb the world rankings Yeah, definitely, definitely. You. Will. I hope I see you at world number one, and then I can <laughs> say to you, like, I I interviewed like we had a session on Zoom, and that took twice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So that's it. Uh. Thank you very much, uh, Jordan Hart, for joining us and cooperating so much uh, again for the second time. Um, Don't worry. Really to me. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, I hope you follow us on Instagram too. Oh, <laughs> okay. I will. I will. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. That, okay. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.